Yes, thank you so much, Stephen, and thank you so much, Dr. Ginsburg, for that very enlightening interview. We have $20.06 by Alan Dorfer saying, $20.06 for Sonic 2006 hype. Thank you so much. Now, everyone, we've got the last run of the AGTQ 2021 Sonic block up shortly, and it's quite a momentous occasion because this game is a game that quite simply has defined a generation. Sonic the Hedgehog. 2006. Yeah, I, I know, 2006. But we have lined up for y'all a shadow story, no mission select glitch speed run performed by the acclaimed, nay, the celebrated Gordon Ramsay. Oh yes, Shadow and Ramsay together at last. Expect edginess, expect excellence. Expect a speed run that's going to be one fantastic time, and it is coming up to you right now. So let's get moving! Awesome. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Gordon Ramsay, and my favorite story in Sonic 06 is Boss Tech Shadow Falls Closely by Team Attack Amigo. Unfortunately, the DLC was too powerful to be accepted into the event, so we're stuck running Shadow No MSG. Two quick notes MSG stands for Mission Select Glitch. It's a credit swarp. But skipping 06, this beautiful package would be pretty blame. Hi, everybody. We're having some issues getting the run set up. So while we wait for them to uh, undo the doo-doo, we can uh, get some donations in. We have Ref Gall with a $10 donation. And it says simply, Chance. Hades, Hades, Hades. Thank you so much. Let's see where we're at with that right now. We're currently at $26,000. 218 cents out of 75. My goodness. You really want to see Hades, everybody, don't you? I don't blame you. That game is phenomenal. Thank you, everybody. There is another bid war, or I'm sorry, a stretch goal that I don't want anybody to sleep on. It is for Ultima 6 coming up later today, and it is for killing Lord British. Now, it's a bit of a tradition, these Ultimate games, to try to find Lord Garriott, the, or Richard Garriott, the creator of the Ultima series in-game, and kill him. Currently, we're sitting at $2,632 out of $3,000. With just a little bit of a push, we can uh, definitely make that happen. No problem. Man, was anybody else there during the Ultima Online beta when, uh, like, a guy actually, like, murdered Lord British live, like, making him stand in fire? That was, that was a pretty intense time. Wild times back in the day of the beta. Let me tell you. Thank you, everybody. Let's keep it going. We have enomoto san with a $300 donation. Comment reads, kicking off 2021 with GDQ is awesome. Thanks to all runners and organization for putting up the show. Well, thank you for your generosity. And we also have a $20 donation that is anonymous. It says, this has been a thrilling sonic block and it's not even over. Congratulations to Flying Fox and Zaxxon for those stunning world records and to Argy for keeping the enthusiasm going all throughout his fantastic run of Sonic Mania. This has been a wonderful start to 2021. And we're going to be capping it off with quite a momentous shadow run. So don't worry. We have just a little bit more sonic goodness for all of y'all. We also got $150 from Max saying, first time I've caught AGDQ live, so had to donate, especially the 2020's best game as an incentive. Indeed. Thank you so much. Oh, we have a very sweet $250 donation from the McMasters. Their comment reads, I love you. Yes, you, reading this comment. I love you and everyone who works so hard to make this happen, from production staff to runners to donators. Art. And thank you, Miss McMasters. We collectively love you as well.
We have Zany coming in with a $50 donation. They say, been looking forward to the Sonic block. I like Sonic because he goes fast and doesn't afraid of anything. True words have never been spoken. Thank you so much, Zany. We appreciate the donation. Just want to remind everybody about one of our fantastic sponsors, Fangamer, the esteemed video game merch company featuring new AGDQ merchandise available now, including event badges, a limited edition pin, a desk mat, a mug, socks, and more. 100% of profits from GDQ merch sales supports PCF, so check them out at www.fangamer.gdq. Hey, Draconian sent us $10 saying, just for Dr. Ginsburg's great interview. I agree. Very enlightening, very informative. Thank you so much. We have Slashy coming in with an $85 donation. They say, well, I love this Sonic 06 run without a shadow of a doubt. Thank you so much for that very generous donation and that relatively painless pun. We appreciate it. We have received a generous $1,000 donation by Mick Mash. It says, the answer sucks. It warms my heart to see everybody in this community come together to do something fantastic for the fight against it. This event is one of those wonderful, special, unique things that make so many people's lives better. Much love to everyone at GDQ and much hope for those affected by cancer. Thank you, Mick Mash. We have fifty dollars. Yeah, we have fifty dollars donated by Medic. They said had to get a donation in towards the Hades incentive. The Hades speedrunning community are awesome and have been so welcoming. I'll double this if Vorim Fish flexes during his run. Oh, the fish flex. Ooh, the challenge is laid down. You gonna do it? <laughs> that would be pretty good. I gotta say, that's well worth another fifty dollars. So thank you so much for that donation and the challenge. $250 comes to us courtesy of Snackery. They say, what a wonderful way to start the new year. Thanks to the GDQ crew and hosts behind the scenes, keeping everything going. While I miss the crowds, I get to watch so much more of this live while working from home. Put this towards the Hades run. Thank you so much. And now, everyone, once again, please get hyped for the upcoming excellence of Gordon Ramsay in his Shadow NMG run, Sonic 06. All right. Awesome. Okay, chat. Well, we're back to it. Uh, Sonic 06, it likes to crash everything it comes in contact with. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, we're back to it. We're recovering well. I'm not sure how far into my spiel I got, so let me cut it short. Basically, no MSG. It's a credit. MSG is a credit for it. We're not going to do that. Second thing, I chose the name because it's easy clout. Some of you are only here because you saw Gordon Ramsay was running hard at this point, but hopefully I can live up to your expectations. And to help me do so, I'm joined on the couch by the Soliana Boys, featuring the world record holder of Sonic Story, Nick867. Hello, um, I'm Nick. I'm a Sonic fiend, but today we're focusing on Shadow. Shadow is a fantastic category, especially after the whole year of 2020. 2020 has been a great year for Sonic 06, and Shadow has seen quite the brunt of it. 
major tricks have been developed in this category, mainly thanks to Gordon, and this is going to be a fantastic run, and you'll enjoy it for sure. The world record holder of Silver Story, Focus Ice. Hello everyone, I'm Focus. You might recognize me from HDQ 2020, where I ran Silver Story, and as we mentioned before, 2020 has been characteristically great for Sonic 06. Um, we have basically had new world records across the board. The oldest world record before 2020 was five years old, now it's three months old. So it's quite incredible what we've gotten up to as a community, and Gordon has been a fantastic part, an excellent glitch hunter. I'm very excited to see what he's going to show off here in breaking Shadow Story to the ground. And the world record holder of Shadow Story Town Mission 2, Triple Agent slash Liam. Hey man, okay, I had the Shadow Story record like four years ago, okay? That counts for something, right? The future is now, old man. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, like the previous two commentators have said, Gordon's a fantastic runner. We've broken this story completely, and I'm super excited that he got the chance to show off Shadow Gnome SG uh, finally on the GDQ stage. Um, myself, I got to show off Sonic Story in Summer Games Done Quick 2016, and so we get to complete the trilogy now. Enjoy. And, and one last quick thing before we get to Countdown. There's a lot to go over in the beginning and not a ton of time to do it, so I'm going to be talking kind of fast for the first stage or two, but I promise... We'll slow things down after. Now trying to speed run the commentary. All right, let's have a countdown and get to it. Five, four, three, two, ha ha, one, go. All right, first things first. You may have heard Cy Cyberpunk 2006, <coughs> Sonic 06, described as a buggy, glitchy mess, and you are absolutely correct. Casually, this game is pretty bad, but as a speed run, it's amazing. I mean, think about it. If the game's already half broken, just imagine what we can do when we actually try. And Shadow shows that off really, really well. He doesn't have any individually busted aspects, but he uses a lot of things to break the game, so I say he has fancy movement. The peasants would go around this half fight, but we are just going to line ourselves up. And trying to get a trip animation here. There we go. Flip on through. This is a bit of a recurring theme in Sonic 06. If you have enough speed in the right angle, you can get through anything you want. Walls, doors, ceilings, even kill planes. So coming up here, I'm going to do a little trick called a pause flip. Right up against this door. If I jump and pause on the same frame, like so, if I don't hold the direction when I unpause, Shadow cancels his homing tack into the ground and keeps his speed. And it turns out that homing tacks go really, really fast. So if you have the right angle and do a pause clip, you can face through whatever you want. There's a little combat room back there. Sometimes a bunch of enemies spawn. One gets assigned as the leader. Take down the leader, they all die. Up here, we're going to be playing as Rouge. If you've experienced this game casually, you may remember it's kind of hard to get Rouge off of walls. In a speed run, it's not much better. So we're going to use fancy movement to do something a little bit different. Instead of getting off the wall, we're going to phase on through it. That's called Rouge Clip. Now, worth mentioning, the easier a trick looks in Sonic 06, the harder it is. And uh, vice versa. Except for this one coming up here. Maybe. See? There's a checkpoint, but I'm going to skip it for two reasons. Reason number one, I'm a speedrunner. I would never die or fail a trick. Please don't check my VODs. Reason number two, I'm going to leave to focus light. Yes, so uh, Gordon over here needs to destroy these five uh, searchlights in White Acropolis to finish the stage. Now, that spawns in a result screen, obviously, and the result screen acts like a respawn would. So the issue is, is that Gordon has swapped characters, and that's pretty cool, because you, you need to play a Shadow now in Shadow Story. The thing is, though, the checkpoint corrects for this error that happens when you load the results screen. Essentially, at this point, the game is like, I don't know who you're playing as, so I'll just let you play on the results screen. This is results breakout. Also, hello, text box. Hello, results screen. Goodbye, text box. Goodbye, results screen. This is known as results skip. Uh, essentially, that text box there, or any text box, hits the same flag as, say, the results screen ending animation and saves 7 seconds RTA. Pretty cool trick, and all thanks to Gordon. Yeah, so playing on the results screen has a lot of jank. One aspect of that is, if you pick up a ring, you get to carry every single ring you had into the next fight, which is incredibly useful for this boss, Exurb. I won't go into all the details of why Exurb sucks, but the basic idea is, he has a bunch of patterns he can go into at the beginning, and not all of them actually let me start the fight, only a few let me get on his tail. This was one of the bad ones. Whenever he dashes off, he can dash between one and three times. We got pretty lucky there, he only did it once. Just because I get to the tail, I'm not guaranteed to get on it. Just because I get on the tail, I'm not guaranteed to get on the back, not guaranteed to get on the horn. Any one of those parts can randomly fail, or I can take damage. If I take damage with no ring, it's game over. Is Herb gonna be kind? Maybe. We might be able to clutch it. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Nice. Now, 
In Sonic Very Stories, nice. the fight would be finished here. Would you like to explain that, Nick? Yeah, so in Sonic's story, Egg Cerberus, um, he has statues on each side that deal two hits, and he also has a much easier time getting on his rails. As you saw earlier, sometimes when Shadow Homing attacks the rails, he'll go into his homing attack recovery animation instead of uh, landing on the rail. Um, Sonic never has that issue. So in Sonic Story, you can easily beat him in under 30 seconds consistently, while in Shadow, you are forced to do four hits and you struggle to beat Cerberus in even under a minute. Honestly, all things considered, this is a pretty decent time. 111, not too bad, not too bad. Now, a fun fact about this fight, the very first thing that Egg Cerberus's code does is check the arena for snow. If it finds snow, you're fighting Shadow's boss. If it finds none, well, you're fighting Sonic's. Literally, the only thing distinguishing these two is some check that's like, hey, is there snow anywhere around here? Yeah, Sonic 06 is, it's a gem, honestly. Now, we've got some hub world movement coming up here, so let me just talk Shadow, let me just talk 06. See, every single character in Sonic 06 got some gimmick or some aspect of them that was completely broken. Sonic has gems and bounce bracelet and spin dash. Uh, Silver has psychokinesis, so he can throw himself across the stage on objects or pick up enemies. Shadow has vehicles and was designed for combat. Because this is a speedrun, we're going to skip most of the combat, which means Shadow has... Probably the blandest kit on the surface, but he can use what he has in some very, very interesting ways. For example, his homing tack goes about twice as far as Sonic's. The optimal movement is RSI, I mean spamming the homing tack button. If I'm on the ground and moving, I can also press X to do a spin kick like that. Spin kick keeps my momentum and gives me some invincibility. And Shadow has access to one more trick that Unleashed and Generations runners might know, called M-Speed. So here's a little lesson in how Sonic 06 handles speed. There is no speed cap in this game. However, depending on what state you're in, the game will enforce a maximum cap. So, for example, if Shadow's running, he can only move at 15 meters per second. That's very, very slow. A homing tech goes about three times as fast. Uh, if you hit a death pad or something, you make you go faster. The game will let you do that, but then it will quickly slow you back down to the 15. We found out, though, that if you're walking, the game never enforces that speed cap. So, I can do something like cancel my homing tech in the ground, which breaks the speed cap, and then use spin, spin kicks, because I'm moving, to keep my speed well above it. That's very, very useful. We'll use it for some sick tricks. Remember, if you have enough speed in 06, geometry becomes way more of a suggestion than a rule. All right, about to load up Kingdom Valley, go through that warp hole, and onto the stage. So, like I said, another one of Shadow's gimmicks is his vehicles. He has four in total. We saw the first one, the uh, buggy back in White Acropolis. This is the second, the hang glider. We'll see the hang glider three times total. It's probably the least interesting one, honestly. It's basically a glorified auto-scroller. So, this is playing itself. I can move up, down, left, and right. But the main thing here, if I double tap and hold A, I'll do a boost and travel at three times the speed. Normally, this section takes like 40 seconds to complete. By boosting, it only takes about 14. Generally a good time for donations, though. Very nice, very fast. Now, in section two, I have two options. <clears throat> I can either... Play as the developers clearly intended, and face through wall and finish it as Shadow, or I can do some fancy movement as Rouge. Last time our fancy movement was clipping through a door, this time it's going to be something a little more aerial. Yeah, um, just a quick note, uh, I don't think that the developers intended for you to face to the wall, so I think you may have gotten a little backwards there. Uh, but anyway, so what Gordon's going to go for now is a trick called a moon jump. This trick is really difficult, it's frame perfect and there's no clear visual cue, so we don't tend to go for it in runs, but Gordon's going to go for it to try to show it off for the people. Um, basically, the way that the gliding works, oh nice, he got it. Um, the way that the gliding works in this game, instead of just lowering the gravity when you hit the glide button, which is what you would expect it to be programmed as, um, the game actually applies an upward force to you equal to the gravity so it counteracts the gravity um, however when you let go of a a frame before you touch the ground you don't have any gravity but you still have that upward force which can shoot us up into the air and skip the whole section yeah so shadow story it's changed a lot in 2020 before 2020 it was mostly just movement heavy we had some tricks like pause clips but for the most part you didn't do too much that's flashy you just kind of played stage as well we've managed to break almost every single aspect of the category since then but Kingdom Valley Section 3 is one exception. This stage is almost entirely unchanged from how it was like five or six years ago. With the exception of one trick we call Fancy Clip. This was found in 2020 by Triple Agent. So yeah, that's what I'm me. gonna do. Yeah. 
it's the mission two world record holder. So Stop. I want to line myself up here. <laughs> And I want to do a pause clip to get through the castle. That skips a very long set of stairs. We had to take another one there, but it's significantly shorter. Much more lenient. Those stairs collapse as you go up them, so there are a lot of things that can go wrong. Um, you can have so much speed that you just phase through them, or maybe you trip on them and fall to your death. A lot of fun things. Managing to skip stairs is very, very useful. Uh, let's see if I'm high enough. I'm going to give this one more try. That's the right thought. Ah, uh, couldn't make it. So if I elevate myself using that pop properly, I can skip some combat. Saves a little bit of time, but that's okay. Now, if I don't hold a direction here, I'm actually not going to hit that dash pad. And then I can skip some very lengthy automation by just using Shadow's completely broken homing tack to dip on through. Now, Sonic 06, it really likes to revel in spectacle. So up here, we're going to hit a dash pad, and some fun things are going to happen. By that I mean Shadow is going to take off at mock speeds, use spin kicks to keep my momentum, and jump around that castle to skip some combat. Now, it's worth mentioning, light dashing is like the second fastest form of movement in the game behind mock speed Sonic. Uh, light dashing is nowhere near as fast as that dash pad. It's so absolutely insane, and I love it. Also, side note about dash pads, they add on to your current speed rather than giving you a set one. So if I could do like a pause clip into that dash pad, the speed I would get would be absolutely insane. Now take a hit there to try and avoid an S-Rank, we're almost at the end of the stage. Pause clip on through, and survey sense. do we avoid it? It's gonna be a bit tight. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> oh no! Oh my gosh! Oh, I've oh, never wow. seen... <laughs> That's incredible! Exactly. He got 50,000 exactly! What? So, why is avoiding oh, an S-Rank important in Sonic 06, in at least no MSG? Well, uh, essentially, they have these gold medals over here in Sonic 06. These act like the emblems do in SA1 or SA2, if you're familiar with the adventure games. Uh, getting an S-Rank adds a 5.5 second additional animation that is unskippable. Mm -mm. Uh, but, um, if you can avoid an S-Rank in less than 5.5 seconds, you save time RTA, which is pretty cool. We Unfortunately, very, very close there. I've that is the best moment in an all gold medals run and the worst moment in an OMSG run. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> all right, so coming up here, we have another stage, Crisis City. This is where Sonic Team said that tornado is carrying a. <clears throat> Sorry, wrong story. This is the stage where Sonic Team said, I paid for the physics engine, so I'm going to use the full physics engine, and I absolutely love it. So the IL, or individual level for this stage, is like a minute faster than the best times you're going to see in runs, because it does two very stupid tricks that involve exploiting the physics engine. Nobody should go for them. So naturally, we're going to do both of them. But first, we have to clear through the buggy. Now, vehicles in 06 get flagged for being hard to control and whatnot, which is absolutely fair. Like a lot of things in this game, they have a lot of consistent rules, and once you learn them, they're not too bad, but the game never really explains them. For example, if I go over a jump, I want to make sure that my front or back tires hit first, that way I avoid spinning out, and if I'm exiting a half pipe like this, I want to build up an insane amount of speed so that I can fly. Oh, there we go. Right to the rail. Perfect. Now, there's something special about that buggy in the uh, PS3 version, isn't that right, Focus? Oh, the PS3 version. The beloved child of Sega. Um, the PS3 version is interesting in that it is 10 minutes slower every hour because you cannot install the game to your console natively, but you do get a few surprises on PS3, which I like to call small little presents for playing the worst version of the game. One of those presents is effectively the fact the buggy, for whatever reason on PS3, is lighter. Meaning that because it is lighter, you're able to launch from the half pipe all the way to the end of the stage in one motion. Yeah, the PS3 version, we do separate the board, so if you have that, don't worry, you're not technically running the worst version of 06. You have your own category to compete in. Everything you see me do in this version on the 360 will apply to PS3. PS3 just gets a few little gems like that of its own. If you ever get the chance, experience the PS3 buggy. It's so very, very good. All right, now the first of those two tricks I mentioned is coming up here. I don't want to give it away, but I will say, this trick is called the Lamb Sauce. I didn't name it, somebody in the community, Yale, said, Hey Gordon, call the next trick you find Lamb Sauce, and then... Well, I found this. So first, I need to angle Shadow very slightly to the right here, then hold forward, and if I did that just right, this automated section should break. There we go. Now I just need to select my champion, let's see, this one looks good, and Breath of the Wild. 
Perfect. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, let's, let's go. go. Beautiful. Nice. And I won't take the ladders. I'll spare your hearts. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got some donations coming up in Section 3, but real quick, Sonic 06 uses a little physics engine called uh, Havoc. You might know it from Breath of the Wild. It is my favorite engine in video games. It's so very, very good. All right, Section 3 comes up here. We've got another hang glider. We can probably fit in a donation. Sounds great. We have a $20.06 donation from Labrys. They say, I joined the 06 speedrunning community and started running the category as my first in July, before the story absolutely exploded. I had to catch up with all this new stuff coming in through the latter half of 2020. Cancer shouldn't have to be a fight on such a large scale. So here's to this drop in what might become larger and larger bucket. To Liam, thanks for making me a VTuber with this donation. And to Gordon, <laughs> may the loads be ever in your favor. We love you, Lavris. We love you. Yeah. Yes. This dude is them. making a thing for us to remove the load times and timing. He is the best. Yeah, because Sonic 06 has variable load times. These are on the slower end. The fast ones are actually not too bad. But yeah, it's really annoying for speedrunning. Anyways, coming up in section four, we have another one of those uh, rock launches, but this one is a little more difficult, but high reward. The I have to break the rock myself. Previously, they spawned in the air. Hmm, I didn't get jump, but this might still work. Uh, not quite. Uh, oh. I'm gonna give this oh. one more attempt. We'll see if we get it. One if I get this, go. we skip the entire stage, so. It's uh, very much worthwhile. Ooh, that one is in a very bad spot. But that's okay, because we have backups. Yeah, we have uh, backups to the awful strats in this stage. It's pretty darn nice. So that's what we call Section 4 Rock, or Sharu Rock, done by Focusite. <laughs> oh, darn it. Okay. Homie attacks are hard, guys, okay? Very, very difficult. So, you know, we'll call that Divine Intervention. Let's break this rock one more time. See what fate has in store for us. Oh, this is looking good. Uh, oh. Maybe. Let's go. Had to get the game really. Yo, he that. got it! Yeah, he had to, to land, <laughs> had to land perfectly go. on that rail. He had no homing attack there. That was ridiculous. And that saved 20 seconds. Yeah. 20, 25 seconds. Those rock launches are absolutely insane. You can get one to send you all the way over to where I am right now on the second set of rails. That saves like 40. The rock launches in this stage are so, so good. They can take a bad run to an acceptable run, they can take a good run to a great run, or they can take a great run to an awful run because you missed the rock launch and just lost PB pace. Now we love the rocks in Crisis City. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. You love right. the rocks in Crisis City. <laughs> I, I do. I don't know if anyone else does, but I do like them. So, for reference, we got a 338 here. The absolute best times you'll see with normal strats are something like maybe sub four minutes i don't know if that's ever been hit in a run or at least a pb normally but yeah so that was 28 seconds faster uh it's very very nice crisis city is a stage that absolutely got destroyed in 2020 flame core section one on the other hand which we're about to load in not Ooh, so much big 2014 so much. moment right here indeed uh this is one of the stages much like kingdom valley section three where it has resisted every single attempt for us to break it further and further. Don't worry, Flame Core Section 1, your time will come. We will find a glitch with you. But for <laughs> now, we're going to go through automation the only way we know how, which is not. Um, at the very start of Flame Core Section 1 here, uh, Gordon is going to go over to the right, because they didn't put an invisible wall there and skip all these loops. Um, essentially, Section 1, again, it is essentially the base movement you got here. Lots of homing attacks and a lot of well-timed uh, hits. You may notice that there's a jump panel over to our right. Yeah, no, Shadow's homing attack is long enough. Uh, and one other important thing about Sonic 06 that I'd like to bring up is that it does have certain points where it spawns in enemies or other objects. So if you avoid those points, that means they won't actually spawn. So Gordon had to go back there in order to get the um, enemies to spawn to unlock that cage. Now we've gotten the action gauge completely full, we can use our favorite power-up, say it with me, all the rest of the couch, Red Shadow. Red Shadow. Red Shadow. Red Shadow. That was right, well so, synced. Let's go. So now we're utilizing one of the upgrades we bought at the shop earlier in the run called Chaos Boost. As you can see right here, <laughs> this upgrade allows Shadow to teleport to enemies and phase through walls to, the, to its target right through charging a Chaos Snap. To charge a snap, you just hold A while you homing attack, and as you can see, this allows us to skip some combat. <laughs> which adds up to saving a great amount of time. However, you'll, you'll see the combat uses in a mission near the end of the run. Um, here, at this section, um, 
we have to avoid these meteors falling from the sky, which us O6ers like to call Cocoa, Puff, uh, Cocoa Puffs because they really do look like that cereal. Um, if you get hit over these gaps, um, you have a very slim chance of recovering because there aren't very many paths that you can take to recover. And at this last gap, if you get hit here, you just die and lose about a minute and a half if you didn't get that last checkpoint. <sighs> yeah. Section one's kind of stressful. And again, it's just a lot of really clean movement. We do have one glitch, but it's basically Taz levels to pull off and doesn't save that much time. Section two, on the other hand, this section is absolutely amazing. I don't want to spoil it. Just sit back, relax, and let me show you the true power of Chaos Control. Brought to you by Bad Hedgehog Games from 2006. Wait a second, there's no Chaos Control in this game. There is now, boy. Ooh. Yes. yes! He got Very it. Very nice. <laughs> so, Let's some go. of you in chat might be thinking, huh? Uh, what? Uh, uh, huh? So that is a trick that was theorized as early as 2012, and Gordon here made it viable in 2020. Uh, we call it Chaos Control, but it actually uses Chaos Snap, we mentioned earlier. Chaos Snap does not know where to put you if you home in on anything with multiple homing attack beacons, for instance, a rail or a loop. So it just sends you to the origin of the stage, which is the coordinate 000, of course. Um, at that point, there's actually a checkpoint that's really close by, so if we orientate ourselves in the right direction, hit a death plane, we fling our corpse into the checkpoint, our corpse is still active, meaning we hit the checkpoint, we reload there immediately, and save 10 seconds RT. Also, GoldenEye006, forgot to mention that. All this is happening. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about all that rouge <laughs> movement, uh, you know, going up to the top of the stage, flying through walls over all of the out-of-bounds stuff, playing on the result screen, that's all intended. That, that stuff... There's too many glitches in this game. We can't keep up with it with the commentary. Just just don't worry about that. However, this next stage, this is this is what was hyped up in the interview. This is Iblis Phase 2. So I have a bit of a story to talk about in Iblis Phase 2. So originally, what we were planning on doing was to have some donation time in this boss fight, because it's a lot of downtime. And then Gordon was going to go for this ridiculous seven second uh, fast final hit variation at the end. If he had missed it, we'd have to do redo the whole boss fight over again. We on the couch didn't want him to go for it. It's very much not consistent. Don't let him fool you. He's going to tell you it's consistent. It's not. I promise. <laughs> However, instead, Gordon found this. Now, this was found two, two, three weeks ago. It is the largest single time save ever found in Shadow Story. One minute. This, ladies and gentlemen, play. is the Iblis despawn. Let's see, so 45.3. All right, oh, two things to go so over close. here. The first, uh, there are no kill plans in this arena. However, if I fall too long, in this case, 21 and a half seconds, I will hit a failsafe that will instantly kill me because the game doesn't want anything to get below there. So what I'm going to do is stop myself in the air with a Chaos Spear just before I hit that. So... Okay, I'm going to let myself lower down during this camera pan. Okay, I don't want to go any lower. At least yeah, for please the sake don't of go any lower. <laughs> oh my so, gosh. Oh man. Every time you see the camera pan, Iblis is taking an action. At some point, about 126, 127, he's going to take an action where he dies underneath the lava, becomes intangible, meaning we can't interact with him, and for some reason, the game just moves him below us. You normally can't see him, you can't do anything with him there. But the game just said, yeah, okay, we're gonna move Iblis here. And it turns out, it's really, really useful if you can get a boss to go wherever you want. Remember how I said the game doesn't want anything to go below that failsafe? Well, in just a second, there we go, we can see a bit of Iblis. Iblis will pop up. Now, the next time he tries to take an action, he's so far out of bounds that the game doesn't know what to do. So it deletes his boss data, and then the game says, well, the boss no longer exists. And I guess that means you killed it. And takes us right to the results screen. Fantastic work, Gordon. Beautiful. Absolutely Great incredible. job at that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would like to say here, uh, Sonic 06, we give it a lot of crap for being buggy and glitchy, but honestly, I just want to highlight how solidly programmed this game is in that it will not crash. We deleted a boss. And the game said, okay, no, you're fine. We're just going to take you to the results screen. We can get away with so much in this game because it won't crash. Ah, uh, you got to love consistency. Speaking of consistency, let's go back to our old favorite, Back to the Bat. Great. So now we're going to load up into Tropical Jungle. So every story has a stage where the amigo plays in shadow story we have tropical jungle rouge now earlier in kingdom valley we explained that there was the trick called the moon jump where we frame perfectly release the glide button and we get shot up into the air we're going to try to do that again so at the end of tropical jungle 
we have the goal ring and it's surrounded by a cage of lasers on all sides, except the top side, because the devs didn't think that you could be able to get high enough to fly over the lasers. Unfortunately, with the moon jump, or fortunately for us, we can. Let's see if he gets it here. There are backups to this if you miss it, so it is not that uh, big of a deal. Right now. Yep, again, frame Thanks. perfect trick at 60 <laughs> FPS, and it is, <laughs> there is no good visual cue for that because it depends on your angle. Um, also, there's this trick we call a quick climb. Uh, when Rouge flies into the corner of a pillar, she will try to grab and hold on to each side of the, uh, like both the left and the right corner. And yeah, instead of holding on to either one of the sides, you will just zip right up. Now he's gonna go for a quick climb at the back end of these lasers and yep, easy skip. Now there's also a third way to skip the lasers in this cage. And that was found by accident by Dark Spine Sonic, the progenitor of the entirety of the 06 speedrun. Um, and so the way that this happened was he was at the ending of Tropical Jungle Rouge. He went go eat dinner or something, came back 15 mi minutes later and the lasers had actually moved. So it turns out that these lasers move ever so slightly, enough so that after 15 minutes of waiting, you can actually just clip through the lasers, but not before, only after. So yes, that is the third way. And remember, we separate the boards between 360 and PS3. 360 is the main version. If any of you want a uh, really good world record, just play PS3, get to the lasers, and uh, go make dinner or something. When you get back, you should still be on base. All right, now coming up here, we've got Mephilus Phase 1, Part 1. I wonder if we'll see him again. The goal of this fight is simple. I need to fill up my action gauge in the bottom right-hand corner by taking down these little minigoons. They'll periodically spawn circles in them. Uh, do I get friends? No, sometimes they can latch onto you. Anyways, once my gauge is full, I can force Mephilus out of my shadow. You can see him down there. If I see him slide into my DMs like he did here, then that means I'm on good pace. I get a few more goons in each circle, and we should be good with the next one. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. Alright, perfect. So I just want to do one more cyclone kick. And activate Chaos Boost. Uh, sorry, Red Shadow. There we go. <laughs> now, he's invincible right here. He's going to choose a random spot. Uh, that's pretty close. Speed him up a bit. He goes somewhere else. And somewhere else again. Camera's kind of fun. Camera's kind of fun. And boss dead. Ike. There's Mephilus Phase 1, Part 2. Now, this is where the fight gets fun. See... This fight is heavily RNG. For reference, the world record for this fight is something like a minute and eight seconds. Here's why. Every time I hit Mephilus, he's going to choose one of seven locations to go to. That includes wherever he's currently standing. If he stands in place, I save some time because he just doesn't move. Huh? Like that? And I also save time because for whatever reason, when he stays in place, these shots hit him multiple times, so you can deal an insane amount of damage if he just doesn't move. Uh, the I.O. record for this fight, individual level, had it happened how many times, Focus? It had to happen a total of eight times. So for reference, um, because it can appear in any of these seven positions, an equal amount of chance. That is a 1 in 5.7 million chance, and it was gotten in the middle of a run by Turbo, the former world record holder of Shadow's Story. Yeah, that's the kind of luck you would only see in a dream. My <laughs> 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 All right, so that's Mephilus. Uh, he's out of the way. We definitely won't see him again. Absolutely would not be the final boss. Wouldn't it be crazy if the phase one fight had a phase two? Absolutely will not. Anyways, let me keep you up to date on the story. So, Shadow was flung into the future after King of Valley. So Crisis City, Flame Core, Iblis, that was all in the future. Rouge went back to the present for Tropical Jungle. Shadow fought Mephilus in the future along with Omega. And now they're going back to the present. Or something? I don't know. Sonic 06 technically has a story, but it's kind of convoluted. It's a bit like, what, Swiss cheese? Yeah, something like that. Anyways, the game's telling me to meet up with Rouge, but that's a cutscene. And cutscene means load arrows, and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to do a pause clip to save about a minute. We've got uh, just a bit of hub world movement here, so we can probably fit in a donation or two. Hey, fantastic. We have a donation from Tempest Mask yeah. 1000 for Focus. Huh? Says, oh, says, hey, focus. Remember when you said this category had yet to be run in a GDQ? Well, if there's one silver lining to this occasion, it's that it came like a kick to the head. Good luck, Gordon. <laughs> I love you, Thank Tempest. You. I love you for that. Thank you so much. And we also have another $20.06 donation from Ultra Maddie. Says, did I hear a $20.06 donation oh. train leaving the station? Choo choo. And let's go, Hades. I don't know, possibly, did we? Thank you so much. Possibly. That pause clip's kind of hard. Uh, background is mostly just non-solid, so I have to jump immediately. 
We can probably fit in another donation or two. All right, sounds good. We have $250 from Matt McMuscles. He says, a Sonic 6, oh, sorry, Sonic 06 hype. It's no use! What happened with that donation? Thank you so much. <laughs> Sonic awesome. 06 tends to break the English language, I find. It does, it does. Speaking of breaking things, we have Radical Run Killer, uh, Radical Train. So the goal of Radical Train <laughs> is simple. Uh, Eggman's on train, Shadow's trying to stop it to get information, and the way you're supposed to play this stage is by putting up laser gates, beating up Eggman's train, it'll go to another checkpoint, you'll do the same thing all over again. That's slow, that's painful, that's boring. Now, if I just ignore my objective, after about 55 seconds, the game will automatically take a life for me, respond me at a checkpoint. That just means there are 55 seconds in which I can completely ignore my objective and try to book it to the end. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I went for a little loop skip there. If I had hit that dash pad I tried to homing attack just right, I would have skipped the loop entirely. But it's a bit finicky. We locked onto the train. This is conveyor skip. You jump off a guardrail, you homing attack up to a bot, and you make it to safety. All right, we should be on base. A few seconds left, but we're almost at the very end. Activate chaos boost here. And as a quick note, uh, it was mentioned that we can snap through stuff like spring boxes. That's actually intentional. Sonic 06 received DLC, and it is good, I'm not just saying that as a speedrunner. It's pretty good, but one of the things you have to do in Shadow's DLC is clip through boxes and laser gates using Chaos Snap. It's really, really cool that such a jank mechanic got adopted officially. Sort of. And speaking of jank, the way you're supposed to do this is hop on the third of Shadow's vehicles and gun down Eggman's train as it runs away, but that's kind of difficult. That's kind of hard. Motorcycle's hard to control. So I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. This is a bit finicky, but hopefully we'll have success. I need to get the front tire of my bike to hit the back of this jump pad. That's okay, that's okay. We start and give this one more attempt. And if I do it just right, we're going to see something truly magical. The vehicles in 06, they are... No, they have jank, honestly. They are kind of buggy, including buggy. Actually, I think that's the least jank one, but... We just line ourselves up. Ah, dang it. Is this gonna work? I really want to show this off. We have one more attempt. One more, one more. There we go. Finally! Oh, this is a good day. Hey, nice! <laughs> this will probably let me live, right? Hopefully. <laughs> uh, oh. There is track. There Every is sense? track. You, oh. you got it, you got it. <laughs> Uh, no, there's oh, a kill plane there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, absolutely wow, scammed. Kill plane. <laughs> scammed <laughs> live on stage. All right, so the way that works, if the front tire of the bike hits the back of the jump pad, for some reason it just sends you into the air. If that had worked correctly, we would have flown in the right direction to completely skip the trigger to start this train. But since that didn't happen, we're just going to play it normally. We're just going to boost on up here, try to shoot down the front of the train. If we wanted to be really risky, we could fly off into the void and try to hit the front there, but the angle's kind of weird, so we'll just play it from here. Hopefully. Yeah, hitting this train is really annoying because you can't just hit the front of it. You have to hit it on the side. Is the game going to corroborate? That is the... <laughs> I'm scared. I oh. love Sonic yeah. 06. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love Sonic 06. And All this right, is why this is Radical Run Killer. This yeah. is Radical Run Killer. Uh, everything else actually went quite well here, so we have time to do this. I think setting up another moon jump is just the safest course of action at this point, so uh, we'll try that again. We can read donations until my sins are atoned for. <laughs> All right, sounds good. We have X coming in with a $10 donation. They say, can't believe we got the real Gordon Ramsay to speedrun the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog game. That's incredible. Thank you. Get it. I believe. Come on. Uh, no. Gordon? Gordon, This no. stage is great. <laughs> this stage, stage is, is very good. generous. I should talk it a little is. bit about Radical Train, though. It, even though this is showing truly what Radical Train is, the opposite of its name, uh, Radical Train in all three stories is kind of funny because it has almost no purpose in any of them. And the consistency between them, Gordon's favorite word, doesn't exist. So in Sonic's story, you're supposed to save a train, then def then chase a train which has a princess in it. In Shadow's story, you beat up a train, then you beat up a train as bike. There we go. As for Silver's story, do you want to mention what we do there, Gordon? Yeah, so in Silver's story, you jump on a shovel and you throw yourself to the end of the stage. There are no trains involved. Well, shovel train if you want to count that. I suppose. But yeah, uh, 
Radical Train, it's a very fun stage. Now, speaking of silver, we're gonna load this fight up. You may remember it casually, because haha, it's no use! Ha -ha. Truly, it is no use, but this time for silver. See, every time we have to fight silver in a speedrun, we soft lock him. Well, we don't soft lock him, we stun lock him. Bit of a lengthy load, but once this spawns up, we're just gonna beat up silver through a train. And I believe the incentive for the kick cutscene was met. Is that right? It was indeed. Let's see some chaos awesome. control. Let's do it. All right, so Silver is on the other side of the train. The way this works, every time a homing attack lands, I can press the A button to do these punches and kicks called chaos attacks. They function kind of like a second homing attack, so they'll look for a new target. So my initial homing attack targets the train, the chaos attack, then targets Silver. And every single one I use locks in on him. So we just kind of beat him in 17 seconds. It's wonderful. Perfect. Now let's see, unavoidable S rank, because we cannot dodge it in bosses. Most stages we can avoid the S rank in. Sadly not the bosses. Sit through two gold medals, and well, I'll just let the cutscene speak for itself. We're in for a uh, cinematic masterpiece, some would say. <laughs> speak of this the cinematic masterpiece. Oh, Gordon. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the load screens in 06 are pretty cool, everyone, because you could do gags like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> goodbye 2020 no cinematic silver. masterpiece truly and then gordon has enough time to put the poster away get back in the seat put his headphones back on hold the controller again and there we go <laughs> no no, no yeah. i don't want to hold the controller <laughs> yeah, we love the load screens. <laughs> anyway, so now we're in Aquatic Base. Um, this is one of the most broken stages across all three stories in this game. Normally, you're supposed to do a bunch of combat as Shadow, switch to Silver, and then do like two more minutes of combat, then finally switch back to Shadow and finally finish the stage. Instead, we're just going to clip through a couple walls and finish the section in under 20 seconds in what would normally take about maybe five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, Aquatic Base is just hilariously broken. In Silver Story, you flip through the, like a wall right behind you at the very beginning and just fly to the end of the section. In Sonic Story, you do actually have to play video games. I know it's a bit disappointing. Uh, but still, you clip in Shadow section, you skip a very annoying ball puzzle. Well, I say it's a puzzle. You're, bo you're bouncing on some giant magnetic ball. You skip playing as Tails. Shadow, of course, we do what we just saw. Now, we have the second, and again, last appearance of the motorbike right through this door. Each door clip's a bit different. Every copy of door clips are personalized. Now, <laughs> the motorcycle is regarded as very, very finicky to control, and that's fair. Because again, it was never explained how to do so. Instead of holding left and right, or up left and upright, you need to just periodically tap left and right to kind of guide the bike. If you do anything else, you're going to spin out. It is going to be a horrible experience. But if you just let, gently tap, it's not too bad. And it is not explained in the game that this is the thing, except for in one location which almost no one has checked, which is the manual. And the reason I know you haven't checked the manual is because it is a thing of beauty. I can trust the manual most of the time, except for when it tells me to exist the game by quitting. Yeah, the manual <laughs> is arguably more broken than the actual speed realm. See, it's riddled with typos. It has things like, you did not miss your focus. If you press quit, you will exist the game. Uh, there are a few other gems. Do you have any on hand? Um, oh gosh. Shadow is an agent for the capital F federal, capital G government. Um, it says for Silver to lift up, pick the object, it will take him to higher areas. And it also <laughs> says the in-game text of this game, which is perhaps my favorite six words in a row. <laughs> uh, I love the in-game text of this game, don't you all? All right, speaking of things we love, we love hub world movement and we love load screens. Thankfully, we've got both of those in abundance coming up here. And of course, skipping missions. Yeah, so um, when we load back into the present, uh, our goal is to find the Scepter of Darkness. And according to our load screen, we need to collect information on the Scepter of Darkness. This involves talking to an archaeologist who has the secret. Only she knows where the Scepter of Darkness is, but she's currently being attacked by all the Mephilus monsters. So we got to save her. Except 
we're speedrunners, so we already know where the Scepter of Darkness is. We don't gotta go save the archaeologist, we can just go right to the Scepter. Um, so what Gordon's gonna do when this load screen ends is he's going to jump right around to a pole and jump onto a house to skip the loading zone. Normally, if he walked directly forward, he would get taken right into a mission, but he doesn't do that. Jumps around, nice. And then we can go right back to where the Scepter of Darkness is located in the back corner of Soliana. So the Scepter is located in a very unassuming fountain. What we do is we Chaos Spear the, the four pillars that surround the fountain, and it spawns the Scepter. Interestingly enough, if we did go into the mission with the archaeologist and just left her to be attacked by the monsters, went back here and spawned in the Scepter, it would still be there, and collecting it in the mission actually counts. So even if you do do the mission, you don't have to do the mission. Also, we'll be quiet, and we'll just let this voice line play. <laughs> yes. The best. The best. You must defeat. You must head to Wave Ocean immediately, o Omega Man. Yeah, so if you guys didn't hear that or you didn't, we weren't listening hard enough, um, that's actually a flubbed voice line that was left in the game. We just had to take a couple of extra seconds to show it off. It's just another one of the classic Sonic 06 lore aspects. Now, consider yourselves educated now. <laughs> also, the thing with the Scepter of Darkness is that it only spawns in that spring that you saw Gordon take to Wave Ocean. So even if we never collected the Scepter, we could theoretically skip it. But currently, the way that we do that is much slower than actually getting it, so we get it anyway. Yeah, and Mission 14 spawns both the Mirror and the Spring, but you can't go to a stage out of Mission. But we can go to Donations. All right, fantastic. We have a couple of people watching the run who have been thrilled with the action-packed event so far. A $50 from Sigma Sonic X, saying nothing stops this train except for a hedgehog on a motorcycle. <laughs> Thank you so much. And K-Turn sends us $25. They say, the only way the roundhouse kick could be better is if Shadow just randomly said action movie catchphrases. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, how about one more? Movie. Go for it. All right, we got $50 from uh, Drum Basher 004. Let's see, let's go, Gordon. Our boy Shadow on the big stage. Thank you so much. Let's go. Thank you, everyone, for donating. Uh, great event. All right, speaking of great things, we have a pretty bad thing. We have to play as Omega again, but this time we actually get to control him. Now, fun fact about Sonic 06, who do you think the fastest character is? And Mock Speed Sonic doesn't count. Is it Sonic? Is it Silver? <laughs> is it Shadow? No, it's Omega. For whatever reason, they made Omega insanely fast. For reference on how fast he is, well, and also how weird this game can be internally, Grinding on Rails is generally the fastest, like, continuous form of movement for any character. With Omega, Grinding on Rails is literally slower than just running. And remember, in Sonic 06, if you have enough speed, geometry is pretty optional. So, what we're gonna do is just completely finish the stage right here, clip your wall as Omega. Like Liam said earlier, every character got a Omega, or <laughs> Amigo stage. Uh, Sonic has Tails play through Wave Ocean, Over has Blaze play through Wave Ocean, Shadow has Rouge play through Tropical Jungle, but basically also Nicely has done. Omega play through Wave Ocean. Very nice and about Omega. That might look easy, and as Gordon mentioned earlier, the easier something looks, the harder it is, and that is essentially one of the hardest clips in the game. Yeah, that if clip hit... also saves a ton of time, by the way. If you miss that clip and you hit the spring, you get loaded in as Shadow on the complete other end of Wave Ocean, and you have to take a yeah. very long hovercraft ride all the way back here. So that saves an insane amount of time. I got to experience that in one of my first runs. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm going to do box clip, and no. No, I should not have. Absolutely should not have. But we do it now. Anyways, on to Mission 15. I said that we skip most of the combat in Shadow Story, but Mission 15 is a bit of an exception. And this one is absolutely amazing. It works like a puzzle. So I'm going to get Chaos Snap almost immediately, and we're just going to sprint through the rest of this. Now, there's a lot going on here, but the two things you need to know, if I hit a worm while it's underground, it'll instantly appear. And the second, Chaos Snap isn't buggy. It's just the most convoluted ability I've ever seen in a Sonic game. So let's see. Do that. See, every time I press the A button, Shadow does three attacks, depending on the rhythm. Like, I can alter my rhythm bit, and he can do different angles. Eh, there's just a lot to go over. I don't want to try to explain it here. If it you want to, just read Gordon's thesis. It's posted in the 06 server. Uh, it is at least 20 pages long. And I'm not joking about that. Gordon has pretty thoroughly researched this exact mechanic. 
Gordon yeah, has written was, essays longer yeah. than some college students have written. I was very bored one day. I had a lot of anime. <laughs> Yeah, for reference, by the way, just with better, uh, just with better combat, you, he lowered this IL world record from 51 down to 46, so it saves five seconds just doing interesting movement with Chaos Snap. Also, fun fact, if you ever want to flex your friends about your time in Mission 15 and Bad Hedgehog game from 2006, finish the mission and then hold down the start button. As soon as this load screen finishes, you'll do a pause. Save the game. And the next time we load this back up, which we will because I believe Glitch Exhibition was met, you will immediately talk to Lord Regis, and the game will say, well, you finished the mission, but you also didn't play the mission, so have a time of zero flat. That also goes for anyone who wants to uh, snipe a pretty fun time on the leaderboards, because I don't think anybody's actually submitted that yet. Intent. <laughs> It is illegal to submit that time. Do not clearly. submit that time. <laughs> that <obviously. laughs> uh, there's a similar mission in Silver's story where if you put 50 apples in a barrel and then die, because that's the only way you can succeed in life, um, you basically get the game to respawn. It feel like it says that, oh, you've hit the condition you need to win. I guess you're, you've done it, and then gives you a time of 0, 0, 16, 16 uh, milliseconds. The game asks, are you winning, son? All right, we're closing in on the end here. We've got Dusty Desert and Meth... Oh, oh, sorry, I almost spoiled this final boss. Uh, quick, let me cover that up by focus. How many grains of sand are in Dusty Desert? Uh, uh, the, there's at least one, two, three, four, five, okay, six... Okay, well, seven, while uh, focus counts the grains of eight. sand in this desert, um, this section, you're supposed to drive this hovercraft through pillars for about a minute around the entire stage, but... Um, that's really long and unnecessary, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna drive this hovercraft all the way to the end, and, um, well, uh -oh. the hovercraft doesn't allow Shadow to manually get- Oh, that's a death. <laughs> <laughs> the hover vehicle's very, anyway, very weird. Anyway, so, um, this section also doesn't allow, uh, Shadow to get out of the vehicle by himself. You have to break the vehicle first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to take him all the way to the end, and for some reason the sand is solid there, so we can stand on it. And we're gonna flip the vehicle over. Once the vehicle breaks, Shadow will be able to get out, and you can probably guess what we're gonna do after that. We're gonna pause clip through this last door, and we're gonna get to the section. Oh, the bird hitting that is actually bad. That resets the timer for the vehicle to explode, but not too bad overall. We got on through 37 seconds. Not too bad. All right, we have two ways to play this next section. We can either finish it as Shadow with some fun movement, or we can play as Omega. So, uh, focus. Pick a number between four and seven. Thirty million. Wait, no. What? I was already. Okay. <laughs> fine. 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 <laughs> I like, see how it is. Okay, okay, look, I'm sorry. humans I can't count. I checked through both of my geom geometry textbooks to look for this for you, okay? I can't find how many grains of sand there are in the world. Both of them, you should have checked through three at least. Fine, we'll get a robot to do our counting, so it looks like we're playing as Omega. Gosh. No, I promise, Omega is pretty fun. So just pause click through this door, we're ignoring combat, yada yada yada, basic 06 stuff. Down swimming tag is very, very long, skip all this. And once we kill this enemy, we're gonna get a very fun camera. And back to the robot. Now, like I said, Omega's very fast, Sonic 06 doesn't like speed, so we can just do this. Oh, am I back in bounce? That's unfortunate. Alright, camera's a bit weird there, but basically, I can run at that floor, clip out of bounds, and then just fly my way to the end as Omega, where we have one last little surprise to show off. One last thing I think you'll all enjoy. But of course, we can probably fit in one more donation while I make my way back to Omega Man. No, we do have an appropriate one from Kira Kusai with $10. They say, The desert. Count how many sand is there, Omega. That's your first mission. Thank you so much. Let's go. Alright, there we go. Sufficient... Very clean clip. Sufficient clean. Clean? Sufficient clean? I can speak Sufficient English. Sufficient clean! Again, <laughs> 06 breaks everything. The stream, yeah. our hearts, our um, minds? the English language, <laughs> our um, minds. <laughs> Vision clean. It's the OxyClean knockoff that you never knew you wanted or needed. Hi. You don't need both, but really you know about it now. Here with... <laughs> All right. So I promise there are kill planes here. Sonic 06 just has two variety of kill planes. Two varieties. There's the very good kinds, which are like flame core. If you clip out of bounds at all, you pretty much die. And then there's Dusty Desert, where they made the stage and then just put a massive box of kill planes somewhere out in the distance. If we fly long enough, we'll probably hit it. 
maybe. I don't know, no guarantees. But the gold ring's right here, so let's just flip out back in bounds. And if you're paying attention, we swapped characters. We didn't hit a checkpoint, so we can do something a little bit cool with text box. Just gotta wait for the right time, and the reset. Crash the game, okay, lovely. Just kidding, we skipped the gold medals. It's a scary one. Yeah, uh, it's useful in the all gold medals categories because it actually, those still collect, even though they aren't shown on screen, they still register and it saves like a minute in Shadows All Gold Medals, which is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's very, very nice. Speaking of very, very nice, we've recently figured out how this boss works. Isn't that right, Couch? Yeah, so um, now we're in the final boss, Mephilus Phase 2, or Mephilus Part 3, I guess. Why not? Um, the third. Yeah, the third. Um, in this boss, the entire premise of this uh, first half or portion or whatever is to build up Shadow's meter to activate Chaos Boost or Red Shadow. Once we get Chaos Boost, Mephilus will start attacking us. So what we do is we actually used Omega's huge hitbox to homing attack off of him to get enough height just to reach those uh, mini shades or goons at the very top. They actually do give us meter, very small amount of it, but you can see that we have a very tiny bit down there. So now we're going to wait for these bigger absolute units to show up. These give a significant amount more than the mini shades do. So we're going to hit them in specific ways so that we can skip certain attacks that allow us to hit, uh, get meter faster. And for this next cycle, they're going to spawn in a certain pattern of one, two, three, and we're going to go ahead and hit them in a different pattern of one, three, two, because the second one will attack faster and we want to be able to get meter as fast as possible. Um, this uh, this will uh, this should be enough to get red shadow mm. if you don't mess anything up. It's a bit tight, so I'm going to take the last one. All right. So yeah. um, right here, he's going to activate red shadow right after he gets these little bits, and we want to hit Mephilus in a certain way to where we can skip his clone cycle. So here, we want to get him to about 50 HP. Time is coming up, by the way. Yeah, yeah time is coming up. This that's good. All right, now we want to get him to three HP. Uh, this skips there. very many clone cycles that take a lot of time. Uh, one I think you missed by one. Ladder. Yeah. That's all right. Um, after this last hit, time will be up. So, time. It's looking and like a 50 did. something. Nice. Right. Not too very bad. Very nice. Job. He hit all the tricks. Showed all, all the Gordon, That was fantastic, and I am so proud of you. This, this for reference, everyone who, don't, who didn't see the interview, Gordon has only been running for eight months. I've been here for eight years, and I have not seen the stuff that Gordon has found. So everyone, please give a lovely round of applause for Gordon. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice job. All right, that was a fantastic round, Gordon. Now, I believe the glitch exhibition was hit. Is that right? Uh, yes, Gordon, that incentive was met, and that was an incredible run. Thank you so much. But, everybody, uh, the stream will be going down for just a moment while they do some tech maintenance over at the GDQ Nerve Center. The glitch exhibition will occur once we are back, so please don't panic. We will be back very shortly.
Hey, hey, everybody, we are back. Welcome back to AGDQ 2021 Online. We're about to wrap up the Sonic block with a glitch exhibition of Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 with the legendary Gordon Ramsay. But first, let me get a donation of $5 by Flub. It says, hey, y'all, Flub here, wishing you all a great job on the run, and I'm looking forward to this glitz exhibition. Well, you're not going to have to wait much longer because I'm going to send it over to Gordon, and let's see some glitches. Get to it. So we're back. Uh, Sonic 06 basically just added a very long load screen to GDQ. Don't worry too much about it. It happens. We didn't crash the game, but we did crash the stream. All right, so glitch exhibition. Sonic 06, you saw a lot of the really cool and fast glitches that make it into the run, but this game has so much more to offer. It really is the, game, the gift that keeps on giving. So there are a lot of glitches that you just don't get to see in those funny Sonic 06 top 10 glitch highlight montage reel things. Those are typically just, hey, look, Sonic can stand on top of loops. Isn't that a fun quirk? There's so much more that this game has to offer. So let me show you some of the true jank in Sonic 06. Yeah, I, I, we in preparing for this glitch exhibition, we tried to decide whether or not to take a bunch of tricks that everyone's seen and they're very flashy and they're very quick to set up or to go for the really obscure tricks that we know are nowhere on the internet and are only in our community and show them off. So some of the setups are gonna be a little bit longer than you might be used to in a traditional glitch exhibition, but trust me, the payoff is gonna be worth it. If you think you know how broken Sonic 06 is, you have no idea. Um, yeah. yeah, so first off, Here's how rings are coded in Sonic 06. Every single ring has a path to either let you light dash on it or prevent it. Uh, I've got to set that back up. So that means sometimes you can't light dash on rings you think you can. Sometimes that means you can light dash on rings that you really have no right to. And generally it works okay. It's just like, hey, uh, travel in this direction and at this speed, all that good stuff. But sometimes a few things fell through the cracks, as we're about to see. So I need to flip the hover vehicle over yet again not gonna work. Um, let me see if I can fix all these boxes. You this definitely is a little can. Finicky. You can actually go bump up into one of those uh, pillars and make that work that way as right. well. I'll try that one last time. Nah, not quite. I'll give it a quick restart. So basically what I'm trying to do is flip the hover vehicle over so that I can get to those rings. From there, I'm going to do a little light dash, but things are gonna go maybe not how you'd expect. Let's see. That should be a decent lineup. Let's angle ourselves, get the boost. And survey says. Okay, there we go. There's the flip. And it's real. Let's go. Nice. I nice. we mentioned it. Very nice. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes the vehicle can glitch and think you're still in the air when you're flipped over, and it'll never, never destroy. So, anyways, let's get over here. Light dash in three, two, one. Sonic. Welcome to the end of Sonic section. <laughs> Yeah, this is beautiful. Oh, man, I love this. <laughs> this is, we don't know why this hasn't been shown off more. Maybe because it's just really obscure. You have to get out of the, the hovercraft and get there. But yeah, we our theory behind this is that we think that the devs kind of copy pasted the last ring trail from Sonic section over here. And they never thought that you would light dash on it because you usually collect those rings with the hovercraft. So, uh, so yeah, that's like the only ring trail. I think it's one of only two ring trails that does that in the whole game. Yeah. After finding this, Gordon checked every single ring trail in the game, hoping that we had something else. But uh, and the only ring trail that. he didn't find was one that I found while messing with all go little stuff, and Gordon felt like he was betrayed by some sort of deity after looking through <laughs> every single ring. I only checked them on normal mode, so we might have a stream of, stream of me going through them on hard and very hard, because those are different. Anyways, you may have noticed throughout the story, we can't freely move between the hubs, but we know from looking in the files, there were a lot more hub world instances planned, like the story was going to be way longer. Usually the loads zones were removed, but in a few cases, you can still access them. We're not going to load average, everyday, normal New City here. We're going to load advanced New City. This is the point in the story right after Mission 15, by the way. Then once this finishes, we get some cars. Suddenly the Speed 60 signs make a lot more sense. So these cars are very poorly programmed. There's a reason they're not in the final product. They'll crash into each other. They'll crash into people. And if we wait long enough, they'll have a massive pileup then just Havoc will do its thing and launch them into the sky. It's glorious, but sadly, we don't have enough time to show it off. If we get over here, we find Crisis City and Flame Core Mirrors. These are never used because you always access these two stages through story events, but for some reason, they're just vibing here in New City. And if we go over here, we hit a mysterious load zone. What? There's a load zone in the unused hub world? Hmm, yeah. that's blank? <laughs> so, Sonic 06 has something like 50 unused missions still on the disc. Uh, most of them you can access through hacking, 
and they're in various states of completion. Some of them work, some of them don't. This one is just freely accessible and only glitches required, and it's complete. I mean, it's a combat mission. We could play it all the way through to the end. Uh, there's dialogue at the start, there's dialogue at the finish, there's a save... Well, you can save the game, it gives you rings. Also, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, so this mission, so normally Shadow only has 15 town missions. This mission, actually, we nickname Mission 16, so you can completely complete it. We have leaderboards for it on speedrun.com. Um, also, the rest of the unused missions are really incredible. Gordon's loading up multiplayer, so I'm going to talk about the other unused missions really quick. Um, one of them, Sonic plays soccer, he kicks a ball around. One of them, Silver, like, has to navigate via the sound of heartbeat and looks into people's memories. And then one has Shadow stop a bank robbery and the, the people are running away and they have health bars and shadow chaos attacks them and their death lingers on his soul for the rest of years and years later and he has to go to therapy now that's not which is why he builds the... a statue that they decide <laughs> hey have a statue for defeating these bank robbers yeah also yeah. There's another one of silvers i want to mention really importantly has lord regis in a cage it does the unused missions are really something special and speaking of something special we have multiplayer Again, from checking through the files, we know they had so much planned for this mode, including online stuff. It really looked, like, actually fun. Um, what we got, this being a rush game, was, uh, well, it's still special to me. So, we've chosen Sonic, we've chosen Silver, Sonic has gems, Silver has Psychokinesis. You might have a guess of where this is going. It's gonna get real fun real fast. So first off, I need to steal these rings so that Silver doesn't get any. Kill all of these robots grab the checkpoint, and then kill both, both characters so that they respawn at the same point. Let's just have a quick spin dash, then kick. There we go. Silver's dead. One, two, no. three, four, five. No, yeah, Silver. Huh? What happened? <laughs> Silver dies. Don't worry about it. All right, now when Sonic dies and respawns at the same point, I'm going to grab him with Silver, and you might notice he's kind of small. And if I spin dash, you might notice he's kind of wide. Hey. And flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this trick so oh, much. Man, everything so Sonic does you at can... the current moment is is wide. Look at the green gem. Look at everything. It unfortunately gets ridden over if you walk at all. Kind of even if you try to do like M speed position, you cannot move the control stick at all. But before then, you have flat Sonic, which is kind of fun. And this is red gem. See, red gem slows down everything by two except for Sonic, and then tries to multiply everything by two except Sonic to fix it. If you die while red gem is held in multiplayer, for some reason. Everything gets sped up, and if we grab speed shoes, we're going so fast that we can just kind of, you know, fly through whatever <laughs> we want. It's so By good. the way, this version of Sonic is like borderline uncontrollable. <laughs> yeah, people say yes, 06 has bad controls. This is bad controls. And that's Sonic 06, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Uh, quick plugs or shoutouts. I am Gordon Ramsay. I stream on twitch.tv slash Gordon Ramsay. Gordon spelled with nigh because, I don't know, some fraud took the actual spelling, I guess? <laughs> I stream this game, Project 06, and I'm learning Sonic Unleashed and apparently Sonic Shuffle because I yes. lost a bet. You lost a bet to me. Do not bet yeah. against Sonic Shuffle. Or do I not bet, bet it would Sonic Shuffle. Get into that. I bet it would get into the event. It did not. If the couch wants to do it as sure. well. I, I, I just want to say, everyone, Gordon, thank you so much for that. That was incredible, an amazing way to end the Sonic block, and we are really thankful for how amazing of a glitch hunter you've been for our community. Uh, if you are curious to see what the rest of Sonic 06 looks like, what we found in 2020, um, I do pretty much every category, so if you'd like to follow me, I am on twitch.tv forward slash focus site, spelled as you'd expect. Um, I'm also happy to help people learn pretty much any category, so, but I specialize in silver. Speaking of silver, I want to congrat Nick on his BB and silver story you got yesterday. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. Telethor made it so much better. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I also run all three hedgehogs. Not every category, but all three hedgehogs. Um, but I specialize in Sonic. Sonic's kind of like my main one. Um, so if you want to learn Sonic, you can always just come to me and ask me stuff. You can always, uh join the server or you could follow me on twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash nick underscore 867 and by the way if you ever oh <laughs> good job petting the cat i would have told you to do it otherwise but yes he listened <laughs> to chat and pet the cat yes if you want to learn this game and if you think all of the glitches have already been found you're sorely mistaken there is plenty more things to be found please join the sonic 06 speedrunning discord you can go to speedrun.com slash sonic 06 and then go to the left bar where you see Discord, click on that, and that's the invite link. We would love to have you. We love new people.
yeah, that's all for me. Thank you when? so much, GDQ. We are we are very yes, happy to be you, here. Yes, thank you, GDQ. See you all in the future. Yeah, thank you so much one more time, Gordon Ramsay, for that incredibly highly technical, highly explainable Sonic the Hedgehog 06 Shadow Run. And thank you again for Focus Sight, for Nick, for Triple Agent, for that very informative commentary. That was a fantastic time and a great way to cap off the AGDQ 2021 Sonic block. That was one to remember, definitely. Thank you, everybody. All right, we have one final $20.06 donation from Mongo underscore ebooks. They see, when I tried to learn the Sonic 06 speedruns in 2014, Shadows was by far the least in interesting, or by far the least interesting, the most uninteresting. But seeing the work celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay has done on Shadow Story is incredible, truly a sight to behold. Thank you so much, Mongo underscore ebooks. All right, it's time for a quick Twitch ad. So... I'll be catching y'all in just a little bit. Do not touch that tab. AGDQ will be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 Online, powered by Twitch and benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We got Darksiders coming up in just a little bit, but first off, we have a little love to the tech crew with the $25 donation from Neko Neko-san. They say a shout out to the tech crew. You all make this week possible. Love you and thank you. Indeed, that was by far one of the less painful tech transitions that we've experienced in my long storied history with GDQ. So thank you so much. All right, I'm going to be sending you back over to the Masson du Dragon Sentinel. We're sent. It's going to be talking about surprises. But first, this is it for me for now. On the other side of the prize segment, you're going to be hearing from the very wonderful and excellent Dr. No. So all y'all take care, much love, and I'll catch you on Wednesday. Peace. Hello, everyone.
everyone, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 Online. My name is Sent, and I am here to tell you about some of the amazing prizes that you can win by donating. Now, all the prizes I'm going to be talking about right now are available from now until the end of the Elder Scrolls Skyrim run a little bit later tonight. And there's just so many great Sonic Block themed prizes. I can't wait to start showing them off. So hold on real quick. Let me go ahead and grab one and... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. We we didn't we didn't have time to install me on the SSD before this interview, but that's that's fine. We'll just we'll deal with the loading times every now and then. Shouldn't be a big problem. Uh, so first off, we have this lovely uh, Ages of Sega hardware poster. Um, it's a ten dollar minimum donation. It's super cool. It details all of the different Sega consoles from the Sega Master System all the way to the Sega Dreamcast. It was sent to us by. Um, by Iggy Zig. Iggy, oh, Iggy, thank you so much for sending this to us. It's really great to hear from you. I hope you, wait a minute, he just signed off, didn't he? Ah, well, we'll get him next time. Thank you so much, Iggy. It's a, it's a super cool poster. And again, it's only a $10 minimum of donation from now until the end of Skyrim. So make sure to get those donations in. Gotta put it down on the floor right there real quick. Now, from Starwind, we have this absolutely beautiful framed Super Sonic Perler. Yes, you heard me correctly. This is a perler. This is a continuous perler. I know, it looks really good. I wasn't sure it was a perler at first either, uh, but it's just amazingly done. It comes framed with this uh, glitter gold background. It's only a $15 minimum donation. Like, this is something I'd be more than happy to hang up in my home for $15. Put it, put it right there next to... Up oh, that side, next to that plate. Uh, but I can't win it. You can. And the only way you can is with a $15 minimum donation from now until the end of Skyrim. Uh, also from um, now until the end of Skyrim, we have these cool uh, Sonic-themed uh, cinch sacks. They're kind of like, you know, foldable backpacks, but really lightweight. You can just kind of squeeze them closed like that pull them open. Uh, we have a couple of different designs. They come from Carwin, and uh, they're a $15 minimum donation, but you'll get uh, one of each of all of the designs. They look super cool. You can see a great picture of all of them together over at gamesdonequick.com. Make sure to check out the tracker. Thank you so much for sending these out to us. Uh, now, from our friend Annie Jess, we have something that I'm actually really personally excited about. We have this Tails Scooty. Um, as as uh, she has called it. It is a scarf hoodie combination. So, uh, you know, on this end, you have a little hood, and you have the tails ears that goes over your head, and then tails as tails become a double scarf for you. It is just absolutely adorable. It's hand-knit. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. It's a $20 minimum donation. This is, uh, this is what I live for, frankly, to see people's creativity um, and being able to apply it to some of their favorite IPs. It's so cool. It's a $20 minimum donation. It's a one-of-a-kind hand-knit scarf hoodie. How could you not want it? I want it, but I can't get it. Only you can get it, and you can only get it, of course, by donating at least $20 between now and the end of Skyrim a little later on tonight. Um, so talking about some amazing Sonic prizes, we have from our good friend Rectech EXE an absolutely beautiful Sonic painting uh, featuring an isometric... Um, perspective on several levels from Sonic 1. And I'm going to I'm going to redeem myself from earlier. We're going to get all of the Sonic levels not only in this painting, but that were included in the Sonic block today. So of course, we have Green Hill Zone, obviously. Uh, we have Marble Hill Zone. Sure. We have Labyrinth Hill Zone. It's all hill zones. We have Starlight Hill Zone. That was probably in one of these games. Uh, we have Scrap Brain Hill Zone. Everything is a hill in the Sonic universe. We have Shadows Hill Zone. All of those stages were just frankly hills. There you go. That's all you need to know. Except that this is a $25 minimum donation. It's a beautiful framed painting. It's about yay big or so. Comes framed. It's lovely. Uh, one of a kind. Thank you so much to Rectech EXE for sending it out to us. I, I'm just so happy to see it. Um, and of course, we can't talk about prizes without talking about our grand prizes. We have two amazing grand prizes for you this event uh, from our friends over at Red Wolf Networks. We have a 
3070 gaming PC. You heard me right. It's got an RTX 3070 in it. That is an amazing graphics card. It's certainly one that's very hard to find right now. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. It's got a 250 gig internal SSD. It's got everything you need to have a great PC right now. You can see the full specs over at gamesdonequick.com. Check out the tracker. It's super cool. $250 minimum donation, but that is cumulative throughout the marathon. So, you know, that means get in $25 now. You'll be entered into every everything I just talked about, and you'll be a tenth of the way towards that grand prize. But that's not all, because we have another great grand prize from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. We have the option, the ability to pick a replica and customize it to your liking, and there are so many great options. Options like this beautiful Zora electric guitar. Uh, you can choose from a fully functional six-string electric guitar or, a, uh, I believe, a four-string electrical bass. Um, it includes, of course, all the electrical wiring you need to actually play it as an instrument, a whammy bar, picks, straps, and you can choose the color of the guitar. Uh, it's available in green by default, uh, but you can see some people have chosen to paint it red. I believe the AGDQ uh, 2020 winner chose to paint it bone white, as you can see in that uh, picture on the bottom there. And it just looks, it looks like the most metal guitar ever. I absolutely love it. Uh, and again, that is a $250 minimum donation, but it's cumulative throughout the marathon. Thank you so much to our friends at Heroic Replicas for making that happen. Now, I'm almost out of time, but real quick, there's an important point that I need to stress. Throughout the month of January, Games Done Quick is donating all of the revenue we receive from subs and bits minus taxes right back to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. What does that mean? That means when you subscribe to Games Done Quick, we're going to take the money we receive from that, we're going to take out what we need to pay you know, the taxes on the money we're getting from that, and we're going to donate the rest right back to charity. Now, here's the important caveat. If you have Amazon Prime, and I'm sure a lot of us have Amazon Prime these days, you know, trying to stay in our homes and stay safe as much as we can. Then you have Prime Gaming. If you have Prime Gaming, then every month you can subscribe to a channel on Twitch for free. But here's the kicker. The channel still gets the full revenue split from that. So if you have Prime Gaming, you can use your free Prime sub. Um, you can you know, interact with our chat, use all of the wonderful emotes, and we're going to take the revenue we receive from that sub and donate it right back to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And that is an amazing opportunity that we have, and I'm so glad that we are able to do it. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. As always, if you're curious, you should head over to gamesdonequick.com. You should check out the tracker. It's got all the information you need on upcoming prizes that you could win with your donations and upcoming incentives that you can put your donations towards. Because remember, you don't have to donate for the prizes. You can put your money towards great incentives like Killing Lord British in Ultima 6. Killing Lord British is, of course, a tradition in Ultima games ever since someone managed to accidentally do it during a live speech from Lord British in Ultima Online. We have to see Geyer do it. And if nothing else, frankly, I just want to make Geyer do a little more work. That, that is fun for me. Uh, I think we're only... 200 or something dollars away from that. So I'm sure by the time I finished this sentence, we've already made that goal. But let's make it happen. And while we do, let's send you right back up to the front where my good friend Dr. No is going to read you some donations and get ready for our uh, Darksiders run. Thank you very much, Sent, for that update from Prize Hill Zone. And welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2021 online, powered by Twitch. My name is Dr.